Welcome everyone to our second of five webinars on the circular economy. Each Tuesday this month from 5.30 p.m. UK time, we have a different speaker presenting their work. Thank you to Dr. Bosworth of the Royal Agricultural University in Cirencester for inspiring the webinar series. And thank you and welcome to our speaker today, Mr. Brieu Safré, CEO of Circulab. To introduce Mr. Safré, after being marketing consultant for several major groups like Cadbury, Sony, and Canal Plus Group, Monsieur Safré co-founded Circulab, formerly known as WIDA, a design agency dedicated to the circular economy. Circulab helps companies create new opportunities by using what's known as the regenerative economy. Circulab redesigns products, services, and business models and the approach is based on systemic design and biomimicry to innovate with purpose. Past clients include La Poste, the equivalent of the Royal Mail, IKEA, Plastic Omnium, and L'Oréal. Circulab was designed to be the business game of the circular economy, to enable people to understand the potential of the nascent circular economy paradigm and to create regenerative business models. Mr. Safré has also written books the first one on brand utility, and the second with the circular team called Activer l'économie circulaire, which means activating the circular economy. Since April 2018, Circular meets with individuals who activate the circular economy to share opinions and ideas about integrating the novel paradigm into day-to-day -day society. Since 2012, Monsieur Safre is lecturer in a number of graduate schools, including Polytechnique, HEC, ESIEE and Sciences Po Paris on circular economy and systemic thinking. The structure of today's webinar will look like this. Monsieur Safré will present for around 20 minutes. And after his talk, the floor will be opened up for an interactive tutorial on circular design. I hope you enjoy it. Monsieur Safré, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Simon, for, for the invitation and uh... And uh, I'm glad to, to see you uh, today. Um, actually, I won't talk um, so much uh, because I'm sure that most of you, you have a small part of uh, this big image that we will um, build uh, together for, for less than one hour. Um, so I will invite you to uh, go on this link. Um, you will have it on the chat box. Um, please uh, do not uh, do not uh, uh, sign in or stuff like this. Just enter as a visitor when you when the window will come up, and uh, you will be able to share uh, your IDs and stuff like this. But don't worry, we will go step by step, and I will share my screen just to be sure that uh, you're able to see or even for people that are not with us today uh, but that we will see the record uh, so is any is everywhere is everybody here on the mural oh so uh, maybe i should say um is someone missing <laughs> Uh, guys, I, I must uh, I must confess that. Please keep your um, keep your uh, mic on, uh, because uh, once again I won't talk so much. You will have to share your ideas and your knowledge with the others. So please keep your mic uh, on, as that will be much more interesting. My mic is on, Rio. Okay, perfect. So. Um, uh, do you think everyone is on the mural or someone is missing? I see one, two, three, we four are people on the mural. I don't think everyone has logged in yet. Okay, so if needed, uh, do not hesitate to resend uh, for the newcomers uh, in the Zoom session uh, the link because sometimes, you know, uh, sure. the link is can do that. for the next ones. Uh, so, uh, maybe you can see here, uh, I will just ask you to follow me. 
Sorry. So right now, Priya, what we see on Zoom is also what's happening on the mural, if I'm right. Exactly. Okay. So now you don't have the choice. You will have to, to follow what I'm doing. Uh, right. So here, uh, what is uh, what, what does it represent, actually? What do you see here? A value chain. I'm looking value chain yeah and um, if we had to talk um, about this economy what's the particularity of this economy i see a straight line um, maybe it's been curved but it looks like it's going from a to b or a to z yeah exactly it's actually it's our linear economy today we know that less than 9% of the, of the flows that go in uh, our economy are, um, um, are going again in this, um, in this economy. So that means that our economy depends on the savings we have actually, uh, but uh, we know that um, we cannot uh, live only with our savings uh, in, a, in any world actually, but that's exactly that what our economy is doing. So my question now uh, will be very easy. What could be the process that could be that could avoid the waste uh, at the end that this economy is producing actually? So what could be the process that could uh, render this into a circular economy? So I will release uh, you in the mirror and uh, I don't know if Everyone know uh, how it works, but you just have to double click and then you, uh, you write in, okay? So I invite you for two minutes to list all the process that could render this into a secular economy. All right. So if I double click on the diagram, I can then add a comment. This is how I understand. Yeah, just uh, double click uh, in, in the area below as uh, the red sentence and, and write in. Right, so I can scroll down. It's also yeah, the first right. time I use mirror. Yeah, you'll see that's quite easy. So. In your first ideas, perfect. Try to put them all just below the, the red sentence. So do we need to hit enter or we just type and it automatically shows up? Uh, no, no, don't worry. Just put them here. And uh, once you've done your ID, just put an, um, just the double click to create another ID. Okay. Uh, so someone puts recycle, reuse, recover, repurpose in the same one. Just please divide this in four different stickies. Okay, so uh, we have recycle, we have reduce energy, we have reuse, uh, we have zero waste. Um, uh, I saw others actually, I think uh, some, uh, some of the IDs disappeared. So uh, do you want to, yeah, repurpose, why not? Um, if you have any other ideas or if you're not uh, very familiar with Mural, tell us uh, with the mic. I, I will write them for you if you want. Uh, 
uh, guys, uh, honestly, uh, I, I don't want to talk for water alone. So please <laughs> interact, that would be much more rich. Um, yeah, please, that would be much more interesting. I was just going to say, I, I don't know anything about this subject at all, so I'm, I'm um, ignorant. Yeah. I'm looking forward to hearing what others say. Perfect, perfect. Uh, good to know. Uh, so now let's stop and uh, we will see all the different uh, process. So uh, of course, when you have uh, some materials, you can say you can recycle it. So that's one of the process to make it, uh, to make this uh, economy um, circular. So recycling actually is one of the most famous process uh, in circular economy, but actually that's not the, the only one. Uh, so you, uh, you mentioned others. Uh, what could be the most interesting and the most, I mean, the easiest uh, process to do just after the using step? in the different stickies that uh, you proposed. Re-engineer. Uh, Re-engineer. Um, uh, what do you mean precisely? Like remanufacturing? Well, if you design things to begin with, so you can... Uh, you recycle things and reuse things and re... Um, reduce the energy of things so from the beginning you, if you've got that design yeah. then you can you can use it more but I think from my understanding a lot of the times it's not possible to recycle or or or, or do other things and, and therefore it's all about the design to begin with yeah totally but uh, when you talk about re-engineering uh, it's like uh reusing different pieces of a, of a specific product yeah so so for instance from what i understand a lot of a lot of things could be used out of bamboo rather than plastic yeah okay so i would put it here so that's another interesting process in circular economy uh do you see other process that we can uh, uh, that we can put uh, in this uh, value chain. I've just thought of one, Brie. Uh, I've not put it down as a sticky, but what about re-economize, if that even exists as a word? And what, I've been my, what I mean by re-economize is to um, attribute value to a particular offset or a particular byproduct that would otherwise have been discarded. I see Adrian has mentioned that. And to repurpose or to sell that to someone else. So to turn something that was considered waste into something you can sell as a product. And that might well, not have to do like, with the design. Like, yeah. uh, reconditioning? Yes. Yeah. I think that, that might be one word. If we want to continue with the, uh, it sounds like they all start with re. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but sometimes we, we talk about reuse, but of, of course we can talk about reconditioning as well, uh, because we take something that was already used and um, people, uh, I mean, professionals can recondition this and we sell it. So that means that uh, you have the same products, even if someone already used it. That's interesting because you optimize what you really what you already have, so that's interesting. Uh, and repurpose can go in this uh, in this box as well. Um, there's another uh, process that is very easy to to identify, but you did not have it. For example, um, my car is broken. What do you do if you're able to? or uh, I don't know, your chair is broken. Uh, so you can recycle the wood. You can eventually take 
different pieces uh, and we, we do another uh, chair or what can you do uh, just just after the reuse exactly the repair who who said this that's me <laughs> thank you louise i will add it so that's another step that is very very interesting uh, because most of the times we do not consider this and um, mm -hmm. most of the time the things are not really uh, repairable so that's important to see the different steps and most of the time and i guess it's the same uh, in um, in uk uh, when people talk about circular economy people i mean industrials tend to talk only about recycling so recycling you'll see i mean we could talk about this for a long time but it's not the most interesting way because if you have a look here, you can see, you will easily consider that, that reusing uh, or reconditioning something, it's quite easy. Uh, I mean, everyone can do it and go on Gumtree or another website like this to sell their, um, their um, objects they don't want to use anymore. Repairing, it's a bit more difficult. Reengineering, only industrials can do it. And of course, recycling, it's even more complicated because you need many invest and many um, industrial know-how and uh, many energy uh, to centralize all the, um, all the materials. So you'll see, you really have to keep in mind that you don't have to go only on, on recycling and to consider all the different steps before. And another important question, when, uh, do you decide that a product will be reused, will be repairable, will be re-engineerable, or will be, will be recyclable? When do you decide this? I would say throughout the whole cycle, at every step. If it's going to be circular, then we should yeah. be able to make that decision. Uh, so let's get back to uh, the example of uh, my car. Maybe I'm using this car, uh, but um, if, uh, if I want to repair it, it's a very new car. Do you think that um, anyone is able to repair a Tesla? They'll need to be accredited, so no, not <laughs> anyone. And when... Uh, did Tesla decide uh, uh, to, to, to create accreditation to repair their, their products? Well, they would have had a company already, right? With the board of directors making decisions on policy they implement to yeah. build their brand. So the, the workmen and women they employ would have gone through a rigorous selection process and they have to be qualified too, surely, to understand how the product works. So I guess if the question was, when did they decide? Yeah, when, when in this process, when do they decide to, to make this, accredit, to create these accreditations? Once they had a solid customer base, I would say, because they need to have proof that consumers actually buy and yeah pay this Before higher it. price oh, okay <laughs> no go um, further Robert I think uh, for customer demand I mean uh, is uh, the people the companies uh, start the accreditation process is when uh, some uh, his customer demanded usually because he's, he's a marketing tool for his for his products. Yeah, it's, usually. it's part of the strategy, but actually uh, it's part, I mean, this decision is a consequence of the strategy making. And actually uh, that's at the design stage that you will decide how you will uh, build uh, your cars, how you will uh, distribute them, how people will use them, how it will work. And of course, it is at the design stage that people will um, that uh, uh, that will they will decide how um, it, uh, if people will be able to reuse it, 
uh, if people will be able to repair it by the, by themselves or if they have to go in a Tesla um, garage, for example, uh, it's, uh, it's at the design stage that they will know if they will take back the cars to reuse the different pieces of the car. Uh, that's very, very important to know that all these things, all the things that you can see around you has been designed. But no one, I mean, uh, except for livings, living ecosystems, no one integrated the end of life in their process. All the things you see around you are designed for this, I mean, sorry, uh, only for the use. And then no one consider these other steps in the, in the business design. But as you can imagine, these steps are very, very important. So that's really, really um, important to consider a circular economy uh, at the design stage or not like um, design can be considered sometimes like a, 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 a nice to have uh, in the business process. It's really important to consider design like the moment where all the main choices will be made. You okay? Thank you for that. <laughs> I have a question for later that relates to current news, but I'll, I'll stick it for, I'll ask you later. Okay, perfect. It, it, it's related to Tesla. But... <laughs> okay. So now let's go for another question. Um, I will take you. Yeah. You see the new question? Yes. Okay, Simon, uh, I, I, I will ask you to, to read it, please. <laughs> Sure. What are the interests behind companies applying principles of circular economy to their activity? Or in other words, why would a company decide to apply principles of circular economy to their activity? What would be the benefits? Exactly. So I will ask you for two minutes to share your ideas just below this question. Okay. Okay. So we go back to the mural and just double click to create a post-it and just type Exactly. Maybe I can ask you the question now, Brio, unless you're focusing on the answers. Yeah, tell me. You know how um, Elon Musk was uh, in the news about asking Twitter followers if he should sell 10% of his shares in Tesla. Mm -hmm. How can we tell that story from the perspective of circular design? So is he and his company, are they changing their strategy in real time with the input of people who follow them on Twitter? Could you say that? Well, actually, I don't see any link between secular economy and, uh, and uh, his uh, Twitter um, uh, okay. poll. I mean, uh, if I'm right, he, he asked that his uh, Twitter followers to, to, did he has, uh, I mean, has he, does he, I mean, sorry, uh, is it interesting for him to, to sell uh, his uh, Tesla shares, right? Yeah, you, from what I understand, there was some new law in the US about, uh, I think it's taxation, but maybe I'm wrong. And his response to this change in the law was to go to Twitter mm -hmm. and ask this question directly. And then a follow-up Twitter, a follow-up tweet saying, I will uh, abide by what you say, yes or no. 
No, I don't, I don't know. It's just a big so much. So I won't talk so much about this. Fair enough. <laughs> um, so, great. Uh, I see that you are much more active on this question. So, <laughs> we'll see uh, all this. So, what could be the interest be, be and companies uh, applying the principles of circular economy? So, uh, let's, uh, let's try to see. So, I see some... Um, economic interest, right? So like uh, with happy shoulders, uh, do you see others? Mm, reducing cost as well, increase profits, right? Uh, to, 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 to reduce cost is easier twice. That's not a problem. Um, I see some, um, environmental um, uh, some environmental uh, interest as well mm -hmm. so reduce waste interesting uh, sustainable value creation yeah uh, contribution to the greater good of 1.5 degrees um, Mm -mm -mm. So sorry, let's see. of course. So saving the planet. Um, keep in mind that planet has been here for 4.5 billion years. Uh, for how many years uh, humans have been on this planet? Just a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much. <laughs> Not so less. Uh, no, yeah, two, two, uh, two hundred thousand uh, thousand years. So, when you see four point five billion years and two two hundred thousand years, you say, okay, you know that we are not so much in this uh, in this planet, and of course. Uh, we won't save the planet, and the planet will uh, will continue um, by itself uh, very easily. But yeah, just we have to be sure that we have to save humanity. It's uh, much less important, let's say, but that's still a good work uh, to do to work on. Uh, so I will add it here. Um, so, two, 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 two. Uh, so when you, you talk about PR, uh, integrity, meeting customer value, uh, keeping up with the times, yeah, that's cool. Um, so what could be this, uh, this group? Well, there's some social value in there, isn't there? Yeah, social values, uh, I think you're right. And we even can add it um, employee engagement and retention, actually, because, uh, of course, uh, we, you talk about social value, it could be outside the company, but we can't consider the social value creation inside the, the company with the employees. So that's a, a good one. So you mm -hmm. see, you, you, you have some economic, social, and environmental interest to, to do this. Uh, concerning the um, regulatory ESG requirements, you'll see we'll, we'll get to this right now, because now the question will be, do um, you see this, uh, Louise? Yeah. Do you see the new question? I do. Can you read it, please? Um, what could force companies to adopt principles of circular economy? So let's go for one minute and we will debrief just after. Same principle, you had your ideas uh, just below the question. Oh. 
Okay, uh, who wants to, to share um, its ideas? So what could force companies to adopt uh, principles of secular economy? So I, I put down higher cost of raw materials because because yeah. right now we we put lots of raw materials into land, uh, Phil, um, and we I think one day we'll be end up going back to the tip and uh, finding all the materials that we've been putting there and, and reusing them. So and the cost is going up. Yeah, yeah, very good one, David. Thanks for this. Um, do you want to share other things? So I will try to keep the uh, time uh, in, uh, in the right um, direction. So um, I see some consumer uh, preference. Yeah, of course, uh, that, could, uh, that could be interesting. So I think it could be linked with Public pressure, right? Um, so we get back to the uh, public uh, public uh, demand, um, legal pressure, of course. So that's that's why I wanted to keep this uh, sticky. Uh, the regulatory ESG requirements. Yeah, uh, the law is a main uh, lever, um, a main driver for companies to change. So uh, in many, many countries, uh, the secular economy um, uh, expectations, requirements are bigger and bigger. So that's interesting. And once again, it's uh, one of the main driver. Uh, uh, can, I ask, can I ask a question? In France, there is actual legislation to stop food supermarkets from throwing away food yeah um how um for how, how much has that changed behavior mm, that's interesting um i mean they are very i mean for supermarkets is very very interesting uh, because um, they have some um, some uh, incentives on tax uh, with taxes uh, reduction for example uh, to reduce um, food waste, but uh, in the same way, uh, you have some supermarkets that abuse of these um, tax reductions. So with um, with food that they could sell, but it's more interesting to 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 give it and to have some tax reduction. So that's interesting. That that created a real change in in um, the uh, main actors. Uh, mindset, but uh, there's are still a, a great work to do. Thank you. Uh, so government regulations, we had it. Uh, shareholder pressure, yeah, of course, but um, uh, for example, I mean, in many companies, I mean, I, I see the pressure is going in the other way. So it really depends on the shareholders you have. Uh, competitiveness, uh, it's interesting. And uh, more and more, we see that the more, uh, the most competitive, uh, the most uh, innovative in the secular economy field will be the leaders uh, of tomorrow. So that's interesting to, to have this reflection. Um, conscience or uh, the end of our species, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> but uh, secular economy, uh, I don't think secular economy uh, will save uh, everyone, uh, but um, uh, I mean, how to say this? Uh, we have so many, many things to change. Uh, circular economy is only a mean uh, to change our society. And we have uh, many uh, values to change, for example. So uh, when you talk about the end of our spaces, you're right. <laughs> it could be something that will force companies to work, but uh, we have many, many things to, to work on, um, uh, not only with secular economy. Uh, so that's great. I mean, uh, you you have you, you saw the, the main uh, uh, the main things to, to work on. Um, now uh, I would propose you uh, 
uh, we are um, 10. Okay, let's go. Uh, I will, I will uh, promote you um, like the boss of, um, of a new company, <laughs> which is called Pooper. Um, so as you can see, you see, you sell the, uh, I mean, you manufacture and you sell uh, diapers for, for a long time now. And um, uh, actually, uh, your shareholders ask you to apply circular economy principles to your business model. So uh, here you can uh, recognize the circular economy value chain. So try to imagine and how it could work for your business, how it could be interesting to apply circular economy principle to your diaper business. So I will release you. And now you can discuss for 10 minutes uh, what could be uh, the main uh, ideas uh, that you could have if you, um, if you were the boss of this company uh, and if you had to apply circular economy principles. Do not um, write, uh, write uh, now on the stickies. Do not hesitate to talk, share ideas, and then you'll do the, the rest, okay? So are we all here now in this group in one company? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because I think you are, we are with 10 participants. I think it's great okay. you're in the same group. All right. Okay, for me, the first thing would be we should use only materials which we could recycle or reuse. So we would not be using plastics or materials, I think like silicon gel, I think they use in there, don't they? Okay, cool. So that could be a first idea, David. No plastic in your, um, in your um, production uh, steps. Do we have biodegradable nappies yet? I'm sure they exist. Have a look. We don't know. <laughs> cotton ones, cotton ones. Um, so the, uh, we've right. got the reusable? Mm, they are, yes. Okay. Um, they're what people, they're, they're the type that people had before disposable nappies came in. Okay, cool. Um, uh, so then we need to... David, do not forget to add your first idea. So no plastic oh, in your okay. um, in your diapers. <laughs> Use. Actually, <clears throat> the diaper is a is a hard topic because. Um, how do you recycle um, something, uh, <laughs> let's say, with a bit of life <laughs> in it, you know? Uh, so you have, uh, you have some materials. So what you could do with uh, the, the poo uh, of the baby? Well, that, well, that's great. It's, okay, the poo of the baby is a bioproduct. Uh, and it might be con considered a biohazard, but ultimately it uh, can be used as a compost. Or if the, if the nappy itself was a compostable bag, then it would just go back into be compost and be into soil. Exactly. So that, what does it mean uh, for your production process to have a biodegradable nappies? Well, they wouldn't go to landfill for one. Yeah, so you can, uh, you can uh, add it as well. So uh, you would, uh, what would you do with this compost actually? Because that means that you have to anticipate all the compost that you would have with this, uh, with this uh, <laughs> used nappies, let's say. But you, rather than having recyclable bins, you could have composting bins. 
Yep. And then at the local park, you just go and take your nappies there. And a few, about a year later, you go there and get uh, some soil from there. So you, so actually, um, you could actually be using that as manure for your vegetables or for other things. Yep, yep. Um, but concerning the, the production of your diapers, so how would how would it work? Uh, because uh, I mean uh, the, the the traditional uh, diapers today are not biodegradable. So uh, how would you make it? So Adrian, I, I, I see your message is now in the chat. Um, so what could be this complete uh, different uh, solution? Yeah, why not? Uh, maybe another material. Yeah, right. Uh, so we won't focus on on uh, on the material today because it's a it's a special it's a topic for specialists. But um, no, don't worry, Adrian. I, I imagine um, it's a topic for specialists. But let's say you have a, a biodegradable uh, diaper, so you sell it. Congrats, you've done it. Um, what would be uh, the potentials if you get back uh, all the used uh, nappies? What could, could it some? Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, go, Sian. I'm wondering if it can somehow be used for animal feed the way that human so adult human waste is used to feed insects mm -hmm. and then those insects can be eaten by the animals so i don't know if baby excrement can also be added to a feed for a type of insect that can then be eaten by animals uh, david said you can do compost with uh, with the with this so uh, let's imagine uh, that you collect it and you transform it, I mean, you compost all your diapers, uh, your used diapers. So what would you do with this uh, massive quantity of compost? <laughs> well, at the moment, a lot of sludge from sewage works goes onto the land. So I would imagine it would go onto the land, but the real challenge with that right now is microplastics mm -hmm. and microplastics in the soil in the crops and in animals. So it's an interesting dilemma right now with that circular economy where we're actually, as humans, consuming microplastics. Yeah. So um, it's um, it makes you wonder if there are some things that you wouldn't produce anymore. Because even in a circular economy, um, there are still some embedded challenges. Yeah, of course. But uh, the, um, if... Okay, so for me to make this circular, because I'm the one that proposed we're going to... So when things compost, they produce heat. Yeah. So we could take the nappies, produce some energy because they are getting warm. And we could... <laughs> That is. Much I mean, it would be something like 50, 60 degrees. But we could still take that energy out. So, so there are, there are ways of taking energy, energy from, let's say, the ground and, and using that to heat buildings. So just to try and bring it back to a circular economy. So we could, we could be using the, the composting or the biodegrading or by a breakdown of the materials in the nappy to actually produce heat that would then help us run the plant that we're producing the items from. I'm making it up as I go along. <laughs> Maybe there could be some kind of battery in the diaper that 
absorbs the heat. So then you, in each diaper, you once it's used, it collects that thermal energy and collects it in some kind of battery, which we then connect to the power plant. And it doesn't matter if the diaper has cooled down, the thermal energy has been stored in that uh, battery. Careful with your electronics, <laughs> because you will uh, you will create a new, very complicated waste. But uh, just to show you a, a good example uh, of uh, what uh, Berlin um, organization uh, did with the diapers. You'll see it's very interesting. You see my screen? Yes. Yeah. I will go back in the Zoom window if um, if it's okay for everyone, and I will play this video. Oops. Do you know that one baby needs 4,500 diapers before they learn to go to the toilet? In Germany alone, 500,000 tons of disposable diapers go to insulation plant every year. Almost 12,000 uh, big trucks in a huge amount of trash. We have developed a solution for this. This 100% plastic free and bio based diaper inlay. It contains only natural fibers and no parts made of oil. We don't need to burn it, it will just naturally degrade into soil. The first group of families used it and proved that a diaper and the recollection system works. Using the Terra Preta method, we can turn the used diapers into a rich soil substrate. Of course. With the help of nature, all the waste is gone and turned into something valuable. The soil substrate is perfect to plant fruit trees. We already planted fruit trees with the soil that we made from the diapers. The babies grow and the trees grow as well. After a few years, the parent can harvest healthy fruits together with their children. This is the fruit for the generation to come. We are now to bring these diapers to more and more families very soon. Imagine the possibilities of this new diaper inlay. So, um... Do you see all the potential of uh, thinking system uh, with systems thinking and the uh, circular economy in mind? You can do this kind of um, of example, and you see. Uh, this, I mean, I won't talk uh, anymore because I think uh, it's more interesting to have your reaction. Uh, what do you think of this? Oh, I'll go first then. Uh, I think, uh, pers personally, it's one of those things that um, uh, my grandma, who, who's been dead for many years now, always said, waste not, want not. And if you create waste, then you've got to deal with it. So, and the issue that we have with diapers is is that uh, there's a, you know, that's an incredible amount of diapers per child and unbelievable. And of course, it's just going to sit there. Um and one day we'll have to go back and deal with that waste. You can't just dump it into the sea or dump it into the land. So, and Gordon Brown, not Gordon Brown, uh, Boris Johnson um, last week or the week before said, don't bother doing any recycling. He said, just don't make it in the first place. And that that's a, another interesting thing is that we are making things the wrong way. We need to think about it, it holistically and, and I think uh, this journey uh, is just starting. It's just, we're just at the start of it. Um, and I think a hundred years ago, we used to do it naturally because we used to have bottles we'd take back and we used to try and um, have things that would last a long time and we could mend. And I think since the 1970s, we've forgotten how to do all these things and we have to relearn them. So I think it's really important for us. Yes, Robert. Yep. 
I, I have also, so can, can I speak? <laughs> Uh, Sorry, can you hear me? Uh, now it's better, yeah. The comments of David. Okay. <laughs> Make me remember that um, here as well, here in Colombia as well, uh, we started uh, only a few years ago, I mean, 30 years something, about the use of many plastic stuff that we use and we cannot recycle that at all. Uh, for example, uh, three years ago in Colombia, three or four years ago, uh, started a new law about the use of plastic bags that we restricted and we have to pay for if you if we go to the supermarket and we uh, uh, we want to packet our stuff that we buy in, in a in a plastic in a plastic bag, we have to buy the the plastic bag and um, was very fun because. Um, uh, some uh, old people, I mean, <laughs> uh, say that way when they were young, they don't they don't use plastic things. For they was very natural because they say, when I was young, we use natural fibers. We use uh, me, uh, it's, um, a jute, sorry, I'm, I'm, I don't know a name in, in English, uh, jute and, um, I mean, the natural fibers that we box bags in natural fibers and we re reusable many times uh, it was very 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 easy for them i mean yeah. they say no problem we, we just use reused again and we can factor uh, reproduce uh, bags and cest and nest in in natural fibers and is and has been something very interesting here because starting again all this old industry with natural fibers that was done, was, that was done for peasants and small makers, uh, craftsmen, and has been very interesting because uh, it's possible to see uh, many uh, the reuse of plastic bags. That sometimes you go on the street and see many many bags, plastic bags, and now has reduced considerable the 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 the, the waste of plastic bags. And I think uh, when you uh, when we talk about the, the circular economy, I think we need to plan in very well the use of the raw materials that we're gonna use because uh, uh, I think is the main problem uh, the 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 raw materials that we use because if are natural or we can make some derivable uh, derivate products uh, after use. It, is, it can be part of the circular economy, but if you use uh, raw materials or some inputs that are not recyclable, make some mistakes. And many companies here are started with this uh, with this um, kind of of thought and philosophy in in their in their companies. I think, for example, uh, I have seen here uh, and also through YouTube. Uh, for example, for the tire, the car tires after he's done, after he's finished his life, uh, useful life, um, and it has been started uh, a new product with the with the tires. I, I think it's very very interesting. For example, it has made tarmac for the roads and uh, some can be uh, coral reefs in the in on the sea. Uh, many things. I mean, I, I, you know that the uh, car tires are very very difficult to recycle and very very contaminated in yeah. the in the in the environment so i think is uh, definitely after this uh, after this uh, presentation i think uh, we need uh, really uh, make uh, to be sure about the raw materials that we use with the aim to be can be reusable or reduce the waste of the of this product is my my opinion mm -mm. Okay, thanks uh, for this. Um, I don't know if you have any other comments or uh, questions eventually. Thank you very much, Robert, for, for the insight and the examples. I'm also uh, cognizant of time. We're close to seven, to 6.30 in the UK. Um, 
So if we do have comments and questions, please give them to Briere. But I also want to respect what people have going on after the, the session ends. So Briere, if, if you want to go on to final steps, that would actually be more useful. And then I can close the webinar once. Yeah, once just we um, uh, as mentioned, uh, we just published um, an online course, uh, which is called Design Circular Business Models. Uh, you can discover the program on this link. You just have to double click. And if you want to know more about our work, uh, you can have a look uh, to the resources here. Uh, you have podcasts, you have uh, books, uh, you have uh, some tools like the Circular Canvas, for example, to design circular business models. Or you have some articles as well. Um, so you have the link uh, on this mural. Uh, it will be available for a few days. Uh, so click on the different things that could interest you. and. Um, and uh, that could be, and uh, that could be okay for me. Thank you so much, Priya.